Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing the Marauders, a group of mischievous young boys who attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry during the 1970s. More specifically, I'm going to be addressing the talents of these four young boys. The quartet of boys began their studies in 1971, the same year as Severus Snape, and they all had one thing in common, they were all Gryffindors. Before the sorting ceremony even happened, the boys hit it off, and when they were eventually sorted into the same house, they knew that they were destined to be friends. Though the boys got on with many of their other classmates, this particular group of four boys had a truly special bond, and they eventually came up with a name for their group. They were the Marauders. The boys had a lot in common, beyond the fact that all of them were Gryffindors, as they all also happened to be huge troublemakers. If there was a rule at Hogwarts, they were hellbent on breaking it, and they were truly notorious for their rule breaking and mischief making. Their group existed for the duration of the time that they spent at Hogwarts, from 1971 to 1978, and after graduating, they even all went on to join the Order of the Phoenix, a secret society founded by Dumbledore that opposed Lord Voldemort. They all served the Order for a number of years, however, on Halloween night in the year 1981, their group was completely destroyed never to be formed again. You see, October 31st, 1981 marked the night that Lord Voldemort, in an attempt to stop Sybil Trelawney's prophecy from coming true, travelled to the Potter residence and murdered both Lily and James Potter. So James was dead, which left three marauders, but perhaps the worst part about all of it was that it was in fact Peter Pettigrew, Wormtail, who had betrayed them. To add insult to injury, Sirius Black, another of the marauders, was framed by Pettigrew for the murder of Muggles. This meant that the group of four happy boys that spent a large portion of their childhood together was suddenly and completely destroyed. One was dead, one had defected, one had been sent to Azkaban, and only one remained, Remus Lupin. The Marauders, the group of mischievous, albeit talented young boys, was no more. Each of these boys, and later men, was massively important to the Harry Potter story and Harry Potter franchise as a whole, and though they suffered different fates, they were truly unique individuals with very interesting lives. But one thing that I've always wondered is, of the Marauders, who is most powerful? In this video, I'm going to attempt to rank the Marauders, James Potter, Remus Lupin, Peter Pettigrew, and Sirius Black by power. Number 4. Remus Lupin Remus Lupin was a British half-blood wizard born in the year 1960. Like most others, he attended Hogwarts, and it was there that he befriended the other members of the Marauders. The Marauders kept a very big secret for Remus, and that secret was of course the fact that he was a werewolf. Before Remus ever began attending the school, he was attacked in his early life by the notorious werewolf Fenrir Greyback. Fenrir sought revenge on Remus's father, Lyle, and his best way to get back at Lyle was to attack his son. Remus was attacked by Fenrir in the middle of the night, and though his life was spared, he was destined to be a werewolf for the rest of his life after that moment. The Marauders were completely understanding of Remus's condition, and did whatever they could to make his life seem as normal as possible, even becoming an Amegai in order to make Remus feel more comfortable. After James had died, Pettigrew went missing, and Sirius was sent to Azkaban, Remus kept quite a low profile. At that point, the Dark Lord that previously threatened the Wizarding World had been defeated by Infant Harry, and there was no immediate requirement for an opposition to Dark Forces. However, in the 93-94 school year, we finally see Remus again, when he accepts a posting at Hogwarts as Professor for Defense Against the Dark Arts. Remus was a very talented wizard, and, like the other Marauders, was able to accomplish quite a lot magically at a very young age. Among other things, Remus was a talented duelist, having escaped the Battle of the Department of Mysteries unscathed, a charms expert, having helped to create the Marauders map, a practitioner of healing magic, having effectively used the bandaging charm on Ron, a Defense Against the Dark Arts expert, having successfully taught a class on it at Hogwarts, and even an accomplished Occlumens. However, even though Remus was talented, he was eventually killed by Death Eater Antonin Dolohov during the Battle of Hogwarts. Dolohov was an extremely powerful Death Eater, one of the most powerful, and Remus certainly didn't go out easily. Number 3. James Potter James Potter was a British pureblood wizard born March 27th, 1960, to parents Flemont and Euphemia Potter. James was an only child, and honestly, a bit of a surprise to his parents, as they were quite elderly when he was conceived, even by wizarding standards. Right at the beginning of James's unexpected arrival into the world, he was pampered by his parents. They were a very successful retired couple 
with nothing but time to devote to their beloved boy, and this abundance of attention during his formative years certainly had an impact on the man that he would become. James's parents had good values, which James inherited, but his early life also made him perhaps a little too proud and certainly very arrogant. When James began attending Hogwarts, he met the other Marauders right away, and they formed their group in 1971. Though he is often perceived as the leader of the group, that isn't actually the case. He was just the most outspoken of the quartet. In James's seventh year, he was appointed head boy at Hogwarts, and it was in this same year that he, much to Snape's dismay, became an item with Harry's mother, Lily Evans. During his time at school, James showcased his powerful magical capabilities time and time again, and it has been expressed that even Voldemort, at the height of his power during the First Wizarding War, tried to recruit James as one of his Death Eaters. Like the other Marauders, James was so skilled in the subject of transfiguration that he was able to become an Animagus at the staggeringly young age of 15. After successfully achieving this notable accomplishment, he was able to transform into a stag whenever he wanted. In order to accomplish such a feat, it was also necessary that James have sufficient knowledge of potion making, as becoming an Animagus for the first time requires an Animagus potion, a highly complicated potion that requires exceptional potion making ability. In addition to transfiguration and potion making, James was also a talented duelist, having defeated Snape on numerous occasions, and an accomplished practitioner of charms, having helped to create the Marauders map alongside the other members of his group. However, as talented as James was, he did still die quite young, which is why I'm not placing him higher on the list. He was a massively talented student, sure, but he died when he was still just a young man, and he was easily disposed of by Lord Voldemort. Number 2. Sirius Black Sirius, the godfather of Harry Potter and member of the Black family, started at Hogwarts in the year 1971. Sirius hailed from the powerful wizarding family, the Blacks, and while many of his family members placed an unreasonable amount of value on blood purity, Sirius did not share this same belief. Many of the members of the Black family went down a very dark path, and his killer and cousin, Bellatrix Lestrange, is a great example of this. Sirius didn't want his lineage to determine the man that he would become, and once wisely said, We've all got both light and dark inside us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. That's who we really are. While Sirius's magical development was somewhat stunted by the extensive amount of time that he spent in Azkaban, he still ended up being a supremely powerful wizard, in addition to being highly skilled at transfiguration and eventually becoming an Animagus, assuming the form of a black dog. Sirius was also skilled at dueling, brewing potions, producing charms, producing nonverbal magic, and even occlumency. Sirius was eventually killed by Bellatrix during the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, but it was certainly a bit of a cheap shot. If Sirius was paying attention, I think that he very well could have survived that battle. Number 1. Peter Pettigrew This is going to be controversial, I know it is, but I am of the genuine impression that Peter Pettigrew was the most talented of the Marauders. In a perfect world where Sirius didn't go to Azkaban and James wasn't killed, this may not have been the case, and in their earlier years, their schoolboy days, Pettigrew certainly wasn't the most powerful, but later in life, I think he was. Here's why. Peter Pettigrew, also known as Wormtail, was a British pure-blood wizard born in 1959 or 1960. He had pale skin, unhealthy hair that was constantly falling out, and blue eyes. To most, he was considered to be a sniveling excuse for a man whose loyalties only lay where there was power. But in his younger years, he did sort of have friends, the Marauders. Though Peter was not as innately talented as his friends, he did have a lot of drive, and it was with this drive that he overcame his limitations and successfully became an Animagus while still very young. In addition to becoming an Animagus, which is an advanced form of transfiguration, Pettigrew was also versed in Conjuration, another extremely advanced branch of transfiguration. Conjuration allows individuals to transfigure objects out of thin air, and was only taught to talented students at the Newt level. The only marauder that has evidence of being able to utilize conjuration is Pettigrew. Pettigrew could also brew highly advanced potions, having helped Voldemort to create both a rudimentary body potion and regeneration potion, as well as a polyjuice potion, which he created along with Barty Crouch Jr. Though I suspect that Pettigrew only slightly edges out the other marauders in terms of traditional magic, I think that where he truly sets himself apart is through his knowledge of the dark arts. Because Pettigrew turned to the dark side, he opened up a whole other side of the magical spectrum, a side that the other marauders would have never dared venture into. Though sticking to pure magic is noble, it certainly doesn't mean that you're more powerful. Even Dumbledore has openly admitted that turning to the dark side opens up a whole other world of magical possibilities. 
Pettigrew could easily wield the Killing Curse, produce powerful blasting curses strong enough to destroy hundreds of feet of sewer system, create highly advanced potions, transfigure himself, conjure objects out of thin air, and more. Was he a bit of a sniveling coward? Yes. But was he a powerful sniveling coward? Certainly. Like I said earlier, if the fate of the Wizarding World had turned out differently, and James had survived, Sirius never went to Azkaban. Things may have been different, and Pettigrew might not be on the top of this list, but as things stand, I think that he's deserving of this spot. Not by a long shot, I think that they're all fairly close, but by just a large enough margin. What do you guys think? How would you rank the Marauders? Do you agree with my list? Let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, you're a wizard Harry.